All right, microphone check. One, two. You already know, man. The yep. Gemini Scorpio yep. podcast yep. is here. Yep. Yes, sir. We back to the basics, y'all. Yeah, Mr. J Hill, I'm in the building. Hiller Bay is here. Alexander Lee Blanc is here. The you Blanc. Yes, uh, the whole gang is in the building. God damn, do we have to do this? Um, yeah. All right, let's damn. see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Lante Base God is on uh, my camera in the wide shot. Shout out to my guy. Uh, Taz is in the building. Um, Taz is actually on shot A shot. We got Monique in the building. Pink Celebrity is on the screen. Joseph D. Friend is just like God. controlling Jay. the whole. All the cameras uh, and on Alex shot. Shout out to uh, Gio to Leo. We got Milani the brand is in the building. Say it. Sosa. We got uh, Menace is in the building. Mm -hmm. We got uh, Christopher Cheatham is in the building. Yes, I sir. See that. And uh, Wyman J Productions is here. Oh yeah. And last but not least. Oh, here Let, we go. Ooh, Thank you. Look how pretty. You know what look I'm saying? Look how pretty the drinks I are. A, I need a pretty drink to match a pretty bitch. Shout out you to Lex in the City on the drinks. We appreciate you. Also, um, shout out to uh, Mahi's Brandy. Um, definitely got to shout out Mahi's Brandy. Shout we out appreciate to the you, my fam. God. Make sure you uh, shout Mahi's Brandy. Uh, black owned DMV based. You already know. Uh, it's M-A-H-E-E-S Brandy. If you don't know how to spell Brandy, then maybe mm -hmm. you just need to go back to school. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we back to the basics for everybody that don't know. Uh, Mr. J Hill, I am the Gemini. You know I'm the Scorpio. Come and that's on, why we call it Gemini man. Scorpio Podcast. Come on. And then, um, you know, our producer Alex is like the the middle, but yeah, he's, a, he's little, a cancer. He is, yeah, because he's like in between us both. Kinda, I think. Kinda. Yeah, it's Gemini, Cancer, then Scorpio. You know, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Comedian. Comedian. You know what I'm saying? Nice little water flow. I like that. Right, okay. right, right. For everybody, so, but if, if this is your first time, we call it the Gemini Scorpio podcast because I'm the Gemini. Chade is the Scorpio. We're a couple. Know. We just come together talking our shit. Popping and, our shit. Yeah, popping our shit, man. I just want to say, it looks like a lot of money in here. I don't know if the PP boys, PPP boys. Yeah, they might. They can, niggas coming in here with furs and leathers and fedoras. A lot of money. Why we got like, these scammers, though? What the though? fuck we is can't going just... on? <laughs> PPP is yo. coming in here strong. I can't. I was like, what the hey, fuck? Niggas yo. selling dope? Niggas is selling dope? <laughs> I think the neighbors think I'm selling dope. Nah, they said you look like you were selling nah, dope. Nah, they like said you, the... you look nah, like. Nah, nah, nah. They didn't say that. Nah, you and Alex out here walling with y'all matching tracksuits. It's giving paid in full. Oh, honey. I mean, speaking of the matching tracksuits, let's get um, this Benet clothing. Uh, make sure yes. you check them out oh, yeah. on all social media. I love it. You, you see know what I'm saying? Us. You know what the fuck Matter is going fact, on. Matter of fact, I'm going to get him on the phone. Let's, um, let me give him a call I love real it. quick. Let's do it. My velour is hitting. And you know when velour is stretched, then you know it's the one. Because velour don't stretch, honey. Yo, hello, hello. Yeah, what's up? What's good, bro? So you actually live on the Gemini Scorpio podcast, and uh, we was just giving you a shout out, Benet Clothing. We want to say thank you. We appreciate it. It feel a little, it feel good, it man. Feel great. Feel great. It feels great. It feel good. We love it. Thank so you. if you thank want, you. I appreciate just, it. Just tell people how they can get it, and um, yeah, what where, where they can follow you at and everything. Yeah, yeah. So you can follow the brand on Instagram at Benet dot clothing b e n i dot clothing, and you can order it. Um, on the website, uh, benitest19.com. Yo, again, man, we appreciate you. The, the material is nice. Yeah, it, it fits beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the ladies got to love it because it's fitting all the curves. It's, it's, it's hitting, honey. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so, it's yo, hitting. we appreciate you again, my guy. For sure, man. Appreciate y'all for wearing it, man. It means a lot. All right. Thank no, no you. Problem. All right, man. Let's get yes. into this podcast. Yes, yes. Where we oh, at man. today? Where we start? So, man, how, how, how was y'all week? How was y'all week? My bad. How was, how was the week? My week was actually really cool, real calm. Work was light, you know what I'm saying? I almost keep forgetting I have a job because I work from home and I'm kind of doing both. However, it was, you know, it's been real light. I did go on a little hike on Friday. Got to get outside, go to my favorite hiking spot. I'm not going to tell you the name because it's not getting no free promo. However, you know, it was definitely a no, we vibe. Can't, we can't promote the... Uh, the the, the forest? Nah, <laughs> yeah, nah. damn. We, I mean, I go there. Look, I ain't gonna lie. I bring a lot of people there, and I go there a lot. And you know what I'm saying? I put a lot of people on with that spot. So you know what I'm saying? I would like, you know, sometimes, you know, some type of. Some so type who's of, you in that? In that? In that? In that. Moment, like, I don't know the universe, but somebody's gonna have to give me <laughs> something. Universe. Okay, somebody's gonna have to give me something. So, but yes, that was lit. And then Saturday it was really chill. Uh, you know, last week was in Atlanta, so this Saturday, you know, we just kicked it with the fam. Jay worked a little bit. You know, we watched movies, kicked it, got food. So I love a little. Relax, chill weekend, a regroup and reset. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Cool. Yeah, that was yours, cool. Bro? 
It was good. It started off. It was good. But I have a question for y'all. Because of what, what, what happened. No, it was good. But oh, you ever scared. wanted something really bad and mm-hmm. then like you got it and it was like, damn. Damn. So I'm going to tell okay. y'all a story, right? Real quick. Oh, God. So last Sunday, you know, never get a Sunday <laughs> off normally because, you know, we working. And right. we love to work. <laughs> yeah, we love to work. And I, hope, and I hope y'all but, fucking enjoyed it because it's not happening the fucking again. But on Say. that rare occasion, you know, me and my girl tried to go to, she saw something. One of my friends went to someplace, Annapolis Rock or something like that. Okay. So she sees it. And she's like, I want to go there because she takes pictures. Let's go. So 45 minute to hour drive. We go to, it gets to a point where I'm just like, you start seeing land and no houses. You <laughs> yeah. just start seeing horses. Yeah, yeah. yeah you just start seeing horses and all that favorite, shit. That part up to the hikes be my favorite. It's yes like nothing no. there. It's trees That's and a, land. For you, maybe. But then for her, it was <laughs> like a, she started thinking. So she started Googling shit. Oh, oh my G-Bow. God. Oh. Damn. So listen, she Googles an article. A few years ago, a photographer died at the, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, nah. But we get there. And she steps, she, mind you, we drove an hour and she gets there and she's just like, I don't want to be here no more. <laughs> <laughs> How did you handle the situation? Because me, I'm like, me? shit. I was ready to hop out. You know, my happy go lucky ass, we just drove an hour. So I was like, let's go. But my lady get what she wants. So at the end of the day, I was like, Damn, we can turn are, around. I love you, bro. We can turn around. I know people. And then we went to hour. Bethesda. Yeah, I we wouldn't have been, like, I wouldn't have been like, my lady, get what she want. Like, now nah, you're going to get what the hell you wanted. Now you wanted this. This is what you wanted. At first, but then I ain't going to lie. You were scared. It wasn't that I was scared. But you were scared, too. Because you were The path towards it looked a little off. I was like, this looked like the last cabin on the left or some movie. Like, nah, the hills have eyes. So yeah, more exactly. of the story. Sometimes what you think you want ain't what you want. <laughs> you get so there. Take, so do some research first. Absolutely. Because if y'all would have did y'all research from before, y'all be like, ah, ah, that's not the Cause one. Because we saw the end result. We ain't know how they got there. It's yeah. a long ass path to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, I'm glad you guys made a smart decision because you know sometimes oh, in the movies they'd be like, nah, we're fine, we go, and then boom. And then there was oh, one dead. more detail. There was just one gold van that was facing the other way. Like, we're coming this way and they're facing us. That was a dead giveaway. And it was just some white, yeah. We yeah, I don't like that. it. Mm-mm. Yeah, we but it was good. Outside of that, the week was great. Nah. <laughs> well, I can tell you my place that I went to, nothing's ever happened to anybody. It's actually very safe. I'm not going to say the name, but I'll tell you off camera. All right, bet. You like that? You're selfish. Like, you're stingy. Like. <laughs> no, DM me if you want to find out. I'll tell you, but I'm just not going to say it on camera. No free promo. No free promo. Y'all, you know, <laughs> like, niggas get a couple, couple hundred. Couple little, couple little sponsor suits. Yeah, now I'm like, like, I can't tell you unless you give it to me. Put my name on it. Whatever. Put my name anyway, on it so, or something. Yo, speaking of name, the week, Name though, a mountain after me or something. Yo, we's watching the... um. The verses and shit. Oh, come and on. first of all, you know what? Who you think won, but Ashanti duh. You think Ashanti? Won? Absolutely. Hey, very Alex, gracefully, very you classy. It? You didn't From it. what you I saw it. when it actually started, you know, because they were on Color Time. I, I, I was rocking with Ashanti. They were not on Color Time. <laughs> Keisha Cole was on Color Time. She said, Matter of fact, Keisha Cole was on. If Keisha you ask Cole me, time. Diva Time. If you ask me, she said she was. Uh, she said her screen was like blurry and stuff. And I get that. And she said, you know, there was complications. However, you know, even when there's complications with these cameras, you know where I sit, right in this motherfucking chair. So y'all get it right. Hey y'all, I'm gonna sit my ass right here because my fans are here to see me. Okay, you feel what I'm saying? So I could have waited, but if you're gonna make your fans wait an hour and you're not even at least in the seat saying, hey y'all, some things going on. Bear with them. They're fixing it. Uh, it's kind of diva-ish if you ask me. However, I'm not Keisha Gold, so I might be a bitch at that stage too. I don't know, but just saying. I was going to say the screen actually looked clear to me. I thought Her, her was, shit we looked good. Look I again. said, I was kind of mad because I felt like Keisha's little setup was a little better than Ashanti's, and I was like, who did this? This little, you know what I'm saying? However, her lighting was popping. Ashanti's was a little dark. You know what I'm saying? And what it looks like is they were waiting on Keisha, so Ashanti was just trying to wait for them to both go out first, and then she was like, you know what? Fuck it. She's taking a little long. I'm going to just go out. And I just felt like, damn, like you got everybody down. Ashanti next too. like y'all late. Like it was really you, sis. It's right. really you. And you should have came out there and like it wasn't Ashanti's fault, y'all. It was mine. But you didn't really come out there like a team sport. So I ain't really like she that. She didn't come out there apologize or anything. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a little rude. Did she apologize? She claimed she said she. She was like, all right, let's get this thing really, on. Let's you know, get this you know thing started. Like, we've been waiting for too long. You know how you don't like that. Of term. course, we've been waiting for too long, nigga. We've been waiting for you, nigga. Like, but then she, kept, she came long. out with an attitude. So it was like, all right, y'all, let's just get this started. And it's like, baby, what? It could, it should have been started an hour and a half ago. What you but talking about? In her about? defense, right? If some things were going wrong, right? If if she said telling the truth, right? Swizzy, do you think? <laughs> I'm just saying, do you like you? Kind of, you probably will be irritated too, though. No. 
but not with my fans. Mm, I take okay. that up with Swizzy. You feel what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Timberland, whoever. Timberland. Like, I don't think he ever said his name like that ever in his life. Nah, Timberland. No, Swizzy like, says his name. <laughs> How does Timberland say his name on the beat again? I forgot. I don't know. But like, I know Swizzy be like Swizzy. But all that to say Timberland. is <laughs> Yeah, I know he's oh my, my God. bad. My bad. You know, it's been a long time. But um not <laughs> Hey, she in her bag. <laughs> she be getting good at this. She's in her back. You're getting good at this. Come on. Podcast so, day. Podcast day. You better fucking Ooh, know it. Period. It's a podcast so, day. Um, so, but what I'm saying is she should have took that up with them. However, if you appreciate your fans, all the millions of views that's on here watching, I would have just came out like, hey, y'all, look, I'm trying my best. I'm going to get started as soon as they fix this for me. I want to get started for y'all. So just bear with me. It, it was that simple to me. But simple communication. You felt simple like Simple communication. You know what I'm saying? And but that's you why think, nonetheless, you think... Um, oh, no, Ashanti won. Period. You, did you watch it? I'm going to tell you why Ashanti also won. I saw a little bit. Because if Keisha Cole sung oh. one more fucking song, I swear oh, to fucking God. Oh, my God. Damn. I swear to fucking God, if them vocals hit up a little higher on that mic, I swear to fucking God, I was going to cut that motherfucking TV off. Because you know what? And she kept trying to say, I can't sit and sing. I can't sit and sing. But Ashanti was... Ooh, so, she was hitting them me, notes with the with, on the sit down on the sit down easy no strain in her neck no little veins popping out or nothing but i mean they both did look look good they, they look great good. they like, looked great they came out like twins you know i felt like i would have loved to see two different looks they look very similar however the look was you know long jet 40 inch middle uh side part you feel what i'm saying i people like was that saying, talking about her uh bouquet what is it called what is it called oh uh B- it was a corset, corset. Or, a, or a bustier okay uh, I, I slash corset know. yeah but i um, thought it looked good though I, I mean like you know i like titties so it looked good to me <laughs> however you, like you know what i'm saying well I'm, you know titties look good you know you i'm gonna buy some soon before? how about t- you asked if i sucked a titty before <laughs> have you ever sucked one are you having like like licked on one I ain't gonna lie, I looked a titty or two. Right, or two or three or four. <laughs> no, I said or two. Oh, a right. titty or two. I mean, um, so do you? Wow, so when you that just threw me the when fuck you, off. So like, when, when you when you fuck? when you suck the titty, right? Did you no, stay, we're not going in the titty one on one. Did you stay on one about, titty or did you like switch back and forth? How was like? Cause you know they say girls can eat pussy titty, better than, titty, than guys. Titty so how do you suck a titty? Titty etiquette don't give one more attention than the other. For you real? better even it out. You so you gotta like suck a little over here. Suck a little over here. What's the time frame? What? I, it don't matter the time frame, but if you want to spend ten minutes on the city, you got to spend, spend ten, 10 minutes? minutes on that city, motherfucker. Give my titties, give my titties balance. Equal. balance. You know what I'm saying? Love, love one like you love the other. You feel what I'm saying? They come together. They are a unit. They're not twins. You don't love one of your twins more than you love your other twin, motherfucker. Nah, sometimes you, you do, though. No. Nah, that's shady. So you telling that's me that's shady? That's so you telling me shady. you don't love some kids? Some of your kids better nah, more than the other? I feel like I've heard nah. people say that before. I'm not I just love, crazy. Come nah, on. If you got a favorite mm. titty. You know what I'm saying? You still gotta give them equal, but you could give a little more. I don't I know. Because for you, it's like, I don't fucking that know, right titty is just it just tastes different. It just hit the right titty got a little more seasoning. Than yeah, like titty. that shit just hit different. Like you know, but you know, one titty is bigger than the other. Right. So, so like some. You is know that true? Like, yeah. I thought that was yeah. A no, no, one titty. Well, every one side of her body is bigger than the other side in general. So wait, so you telling me one of my balls is bigger than my other ball? Yes. Which one is the biggest? The left. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get that left one some extra attention. You feel me? No, no, no. But put so, your fucking leg down and don't ever do that again. But no, no, no. So uh, I can't put it up too high because then you might touch my gooch and I don't like that. That's gay. Niggas like that type of shit. No. I don't. I, I hear I a lot of men talk about the gooch. I didn't even hear that. I found like out what y'all the gooch was like it, two weeks ago. I didn't even like know what that meant. Y'all nasty. And y'all need a cap on y'all nasty because y'all don't like it. But some niggas do like that little. Gooch, aka part of the ass look. Just say you like your. If you like your ass, just say, just say, just say that. that. Just say that. Just so, say, that. So, say that. Don't tell if me. You like your ass, hold on, hold on. Say, that. say that to a bitch who's gonna do it. Don't tell me because I don't like that. So Niggas back. So, words. so so you you didn't watch it. So I guess we had did a we actually did a uh, poll. Yep. A poll on Twitter. We scroll up. And damn, Jay thirsty. Let me catch up. Yeah, it was too good. Like. Lex I know, right? Drinks. I can't, Lex, I'm can't money, can you scroll up to Shout out to hold on. Shout out to Lexi in the city. Hold the fuck on. Lex, triple X, sex. You know what I'm saying? Sex on the beach, drink. Hey, Lex, scroll can I get a chart, straw, the, the, pretty please? So that's our... Oh, you made a chart? You was, I'm, I'm not down. I, you know, I'm Oh, producer <laughs> Alex is in his motherfucking bag, right, so honey. so here we go. Um, so from round for round... Damn. Uh, you, this you looks gotta, fancy. Can you write this down? Because I'm going to say who, who won. So on first round, 34%. Well, thirty-four people, or no, thirty-four no, percent. No, okay, yep. so sixty-six percent voted uh, Ashanti happy. happy. Absolutely, so she over won that changed first my mind. Yep. So round Thank two, you so much, mother. Um, Keisha Cole uh, played should have cheated, and Ashanti played the way I love. Sixty-four uh, percent shows Keisha Cole, so we got one-one. Round three, Keisha Cole played enough of 
Enough of No Love, Ashanti played Don't Leave Me Alone. Um, 64% voted Keisha Cole won that battle. Um, are we, is this relatively right so far or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, so round four, can, Keisha Cole played Should Have Let You Go. Ashanti played Rock With You, 66% Absolute of people fucking Luke. voted Absolute fucking Luke. Rock With You. Um, round five. Keisha Cole, I remember. Uh, Shanti Southside, people voted Southside. You better go I think that was 20. great. I'm trying to go real fast, real fast. <laughs> Round six, uh, Keisha Cole won. She she won with uh, last night. Round seven. I would have gave it to Ain't It Funny. I ain't gonna hold you. Ain't It Funny? Yeah. They I think last that. night was cool. Ain't it funny, baby, if you want. Oh, no, that shit fire. Yeah, yeah, I probably, no, 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 no. I probably, over, I probably, over fucking I, last night. I probably, no, oh, I, I, my I, I, God. That's something yeah, you said. Annoy yeah, the yeah. shit. I know nah, all the I words, though. If I told you. No, nah, I would have played. I would have played. That played shit used to be a vibe. I like that. Yeah. yeah. It funny. Now, that shit crank. Yeah. So, round seven. Uh, or, I mean, where we at? Round seven. Keisha Cole won with uh, Play Your Cards Right over Pox Life. I think that was the round oh, yeah. that nobody really liked. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that was the round. I'm not really sure, but they, they chose uh, Keisha Cole. Round eight, they chose Keisha Cole with Love. I think, I mm. mean, Love beats anything. Yeah, Even facts. though Rain was fire, but... Wait, it beat Rain? Yeah. Why would they but, put... Oh I mean, God. Love beat anything, though. I don't know. I, I think Love is one of them one of them songs that dun, beat anything. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna get it at 14. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love beats anything. I used to think that. Nah, that's not do bang. But uh, <laughs> number nine, uh, Trust and Believe. Uh, Shanti won with uh, Down For Me, of course. Of course. Of course. Round 10. Uh, that was a close Keisha round, Cole won with uh, You've Changed over Runaway. I, I would say, I would say, yeah, I like that. Um, 11. Keisha Cole lost. She played Heaven Sent. Damn. Like over that. Baby? Oh, yeah, yeah, Baby. No, that's it, it was easy. towards, baby it was wins. against Baby. 12. Baby Ashanti yes. won by a landslide with only you. I of like course. That. I like of that. Course. I like that. 13. Because why the fuck would she pray brand new? 13. Keisha but, okay. Cole. Sorry. Keisha, I'm sorry. 13. Keisha Cole won with uh, Trust over What's Love. Now, I, mm. love, I like What's Love, though. And then at. I, I like What's Love. 14. Uh, Keisha Cole won. Keisha Cole played I've Changed 54%. Uh, Shanti, Into You, 41%. Mm. Uh, mm. Round 15, Movies by Shanti. And Keisha Cole won uh, 57% would give it up to me. I don't know. How yeah, I think that was the round. I don't know how I feel about that. Wait, wait, wait. What was it against again? Give it up to me? I don't know. What? Versus movies. I don't like movies. Oh. I think you said you like well, movies. No, I don't, well, I never, if you were middle school I never heard and that you song. know what I'm saying, the girls probably like movies. However, Give It Up to Me is a nationally. You know, accredited song like where everybody's just gonna love that male, female. You know what I'm saying? Because the girls used to get their wine onto that, so for sure. Well, uh, yeah. But movies, middle school me. Oh I no, love... give it up to me was uh was Sean Paul, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Means, yeah, exactly. That's another that's one gonna, that beats. That's, that's gonna beat a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, so I get that. I get that one. Round sixteen was Let It Go, Keisha Cole won, and Ashanti played Mesmerized. Thirty nine percent of people mesmerized. That's I don't Damn, know. I used to like my surprise. <laughs> let it go. That was that's Keisha Cole. But yeah. let it go. Yeah. I, I can see why let it go one. I can see it. I can see it. I don't but know. I I'm gonna like, choose mesmerize yeah. every single time. I, I would choose mesmerize, but I could see where some people probably mm. would have to put let it go. 17, Ashanti won with foolish. And of course. Casey played never. Duh. I don't even know what never was. Foolish, foolish. foolish. So yeah, foolish was it's... never would have made it. Come on. <laughs> Next. God. Uh, round eighteen, you compete, you complete me, eighty oh, percent. That was my song. Ashanti played "Break Up to Make Up." Yeah, I thought. Yeah, anyways. yeah, that was yeah, Keisha. That was gonna go to Keisha. Nineteen, don't let them. Uh, Seventy-two percent, Ashanti, Keisha Cole. I don't even know what this is. Jay, what? I'm trying to read this. I probably it probably was a lot, so I probably you put played it me for the last time. Yeah, That's what it was. I was I like, probably put it together. You put numbers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, I got yeah, dyslexia, yeah, yeah. Jay. This, well, is, this is yeah. So and twenty was around that like Keisha Cole played some new shit like why would you do that? Always on time was Ashanti and yeah. Keisha Cole said don't so want to be in love. with So you. what was of the course. score from the people? Uh, doing my totals. One second, I drum, thought you were drum roll, this. please. I did. Da, 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 da. I hope you can add that in like a, a little segment. Da, 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 no, like little drum roll. That shit That's wild. What, Sorry, where we at? Yeah. I'm gonna be a YouTube couple so bad. I need drum rolls. Uh, Shout out to be wanting to like, come on, let's go out let's, here. Let's, and let's, like... let, let's add the little pow, like the little effects and stuff. Uh, All you gotta do is, is, is just count one person. You don't have to count, uh -huh. just count one person. Because whoever that is, then the other was gonna be the other number out of 20. No? Like if somebody got yeah, yeah, 11, yeah, yeah. 11, 9, Keisha Cole. 
According to the poll. According the to the him. poll. I'll kick the mic over. So according to we the thought Ashanti won, but according Jay, to the poll. That was Jay's followers, so I don't know about it. According to the poll, Keisha Cole won 11-9. Ashanti won. Mm. Let's get into the podcast, you guys. Come on, let's have some fun. Um, We were talking, Uh, did y'all want to go straight into the um, Danny Lay or we going straight? Oh, enabling toxic behaviors. We'll go do, you think, do you think you enable toxic behaviors? From Of you? Like you have some toxic behaviors that I may enable? Yeah. Do you think? How does that even look? So like when we say enabling toxic behaviors, we're meaning like in our in our relationship, there's something that our partner may do that we continuously let them no do without like checking them or mm. like correcting them yeah. and explaining to them where they're wrong and continuously letting them do it. Yeah. Enabling. So before, yeah, I was going to say like looking, breaking down like yeah. what is I got enabling. one thing in my mind already. Right? I mean, oh, like, if now. you want to break down an enabler, the term generally describes someone whose behavior allows a loved person or one to continue self-destructive patterns Ooh. or behavior. So, I'm going to so, let the ladies go first. No, 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 because you got one. No, no, I don't no, got no. one yet. Come on. You don't yours. got one? No, not yet. Not off the top. So tell me what yours. So, I might come up with one. So I think, I think, so I think it's both, right? So I think. Self-destructing behavior patterns. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, but I think it's for both, right? Okay. So I think I'm a. My enabling pattern is not putting my foot down. I think I spoke on that in a podcast a mm -hmm. few times, right? Mm -hmm. But in that, I think one thing that I need to put my foot down more is when it comes to like finances. Okay. So I think like, shall they be wanting to go here, 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 splurge here, splurge here. And I'll be like, man, Work hard, play uh, hard. I'm trying to like, you know, save money and like put it in, in other bills that we need to pay for. But a lot of times... I'll feel like that, and I won't be like, nah, we you can't just do like, that. Let, it, let her do I'll it. I'll be like, fuck Happy it, wife, on. happy life. Right. So I think that's one thing, but I think that does mm -hmm. enable you because you, I, I feel like you think it's, you, it is okay to go- Work hard, play hard? Yeah. And sometimes you could just work hard and play hard yeah. later? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think okay. that's something that I enable, but at the same time, I can see Something's how- Something's loading. I don't know what it is, but it's- <laughs> it's just, <laughs> Oh, she's like- Something she's is about loading. Hmm. <laughs> The bomb. Because the way she responded is just okay. like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. No I got talk back or nothing. She was like, okay, just, all right. Okay. Why can't just be learning? You know? I don't know. Like, why <laughs> I got to be cooking up some? What if I just learned over the time of us, you know, going through these conversations that I just learned to let you. So you know what, what, what if, so how do we, so in, in I'm like, say, say. saying that though, right? Uh -huh. In relationships, if that's, if that's yeah. true, right? How do we, because I, I, part of me feel like, you know, in a relationship, if you know that's how I am, you yeah. should be more, uh, considerate right mm -hmm. so like if you know like i'm if you know we have bills and you know i'm focused on bills mm -hmm. don't even ask me to get you something or don't don't ask me to go out mm -hmm. right but at the same time i can see how if that's you yeah. like going out then i should be able to put my foot down and say no we can't do this right yeah. now no matter how you react in yeah. that moment what about balance how does that what, what is that i don't know because like you know sometimes like people be like you know because i feel like friends do it too sometimes like people be like if my friends ask me to go drinking one more time the answer is no like you get what i'm saying like because it's like, because you know I'm going to say yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, just balance of like, sometimes it's okay. And then other times like, you know, we got a strictly budget right now. We can't squeeze in little fun endeavors. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Does it have to directly be a enabling? See, for me, balance looks like when everything is paid. So if everything is not paid, ain't no balance to do anything else because mm. that's irresponsible. In my, in my eye. Is balance ever always just paid? Finance? Is it always finance? I mean, for me, right? Because we talk about finances. So I think like... I'm Is it time that everything is just completely always paid? It could be, though. I think so. I think yeah. like... I think yeah. we could, you can get caught up and like, you know, just be... Yeah. I don't know. Just say, let's just say caught up, right? We can be caught up and then we can have fun, right? Oh, right. So that means everything is paid. Everything right. is up to date. But right. if you have something that's late yeah. and you're, hold and on, you're doing on. other things... I pay my bills now before I go have fun. It'll be other shit that, you know, may come up and I'll be I like, mean, well, that could wait. No, nah, I mean, that's not true. And I'm going that. It's been time for both of us, though, that both yeah. of us might have something and I think that's okay. fine. It's uh, like we might be late on a bill and we decide to yeah. go out to I eat prioritize, or Yeah, I prioritize right? I like, my food over the bill. Right, and I think that's just for me. Because one thing about me, I'm going out to eat, <laughs> period. But I think for <laughs> me, I think, you know, I, I would rather have <laughs> everything Yeah. paid and, and, and then and enjoy it. Straight, enjoy it so you don't feel like, you know, like, damn, like, you know, we gonna go do this, but we still gotta go do this. But we did that, and we still could do that. And at the end of the day, everything's done. Right. I like so, that. So, do you feel like there's any behavior patterns that you in tell? Well, as far as enabling, yeah. Within Jay, um, one that I think is, you know, uh, sometimes I like so. 
you know, but because I think I've grown from this, I think I give it a little more grace. But I think that Jay's a chronic warrior, and I think that mm, it, damn. I think that it, it can be self destructive. Like you know, what I'm saying because I feel like sometimes he's always in this worry spirit where it, it takes away from like happy moments because no matter how happy the moment is, he'll find something to worry about, and that's like a battle sometimes. Well, I'm like, bro, like just we're in it, like let it be happy. Right. Um, and I think that if I, you know, found a way to communicate with him where it's kind of like. You know, instead of worrying, try this. But sometimes it just frustrates me. So I can't really communicate. Like, instead of you worrying, you know, or being stressed about it, how about giving me a solution? Giving maybe. you a solution. But mm. sometimes it frustrates me. So I can't really present the solution because I'm just like, you're always fucking worrying about something. Like, we can't just enjoy this moment instead of being like, you know, here's a solution. So overall, because I'm not giving him a solution, he can't really fix it mm -hmm. because that's kind of in his characteristic already, probably prior to me. You know what I'm saying? If you're somebody, you know, I've heard the term chronic worrying before. Like that's a, that's something a lot of people do. You know what I'm saying? But because I used to do it at a time and I kind of got good in that area of just, you know, not going with the flow, but just literally letting God control everything. I just don't really mm. think about it so much. I, but because I was in that place before, I kind of give it more grace than instead of finding a solution to help him get out of it. Because I do think it is, it's not directly self-destructing, but it does bring enough doubt into situations it where door. it opens up those doors, if so that makes sense. I have like two questions, right? Yeah. The first question is, you know, you brought up something great that I think I sometimes struggle with. And that's like being so... Like you can point out something, but you don't bring a solution mm -hmm. to it, right? So like they say, anytime you want to point point out a flaw, if you have a team, you want to set isolate the situation first, and then you want to give. If you want to give two problems, make sure you bring uh something they did do yeah. as well, right? Yeah. And I think when you said that, mm -hmm. I was gonna ask, is it fair that we even speak on these things if we don't have a resolution? Like if if if, if something gets on my nerves to that point, if I can't bring you a resolution, is it solution. fair that I, I yeah, if I can't bring you a solution, is it fair to me to bring you a problem? And and, and that's and that's where I think it's just kinda like, you know, kinda trying to find out the discernment mm. in that aspect because it's like okay, I don't want to speak on this and I'm really not helping because at this point I'm complaining. If mm -hmm. I'm not helping it, I'm complaining. You get what I'm saying? And sometimes it's, I'm not telling people though to suppress because sometimes it's okay to like, look, like, because it's bothering because you. It's bothering because it's bothering me. You, you should I should be able to, be able to say that. Exactly. But however, I should be able to use discernment where it's like, okay, you might have said that already. You don't really need to say it again unless you're going to help. You get what I'm saying? Um, instead of continuously being like, oh, here you go again, or you're doing this again. God damn, you're doing this again. Like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just really being like, damn, look, obviously I know that this is hard for you to do when you do that. You know what mm. I'm saying? You know, something that I suggest, you know, is maybe this. You know what I'm saying? But then it does come into that battle sometimes. It's like, Sometimes people are stuck in that way. Just like, for example, like finances, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's, I, I'm very open about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I like to treat myself. Spending Sometimes money. I treat myself too much mm -hmm. and I'm not going to lie. Like I treat myself Spurging. too much. I'd be like, you know Shopping what I'm saying? But you know how some people got Traveling. vices? Like, no, no. You know how people say they got vices? Like some people may go through a hard time. They want to smoke. If I go through a hard time, I'm going to go on a trip. I'm going to go, I'm going to go do something to make myself feel good. So it's, it's kind of one of my vices. Dealing with, right? It's crazy. It's cuckoo for cocoa puffs. It's, it's kind of one of my vices, and sometimes it turns out very well because Jay ends up enjoying himself too. Mm -hmm. um, just to fucking say, that's since fair. I'm so fucking terrible, um, he enjoys it, and also, you know, that's just kind of my getaway. And unfortunately, things cost money, so I can't really get away. Like if I'm going through something, as that being my vice, because I'm going through it, and because these things cost money, it's like it's no different than like people who got like an addiction to drugs, like. They may not have no money, but guess what they're going to spend their money on? The motherfucking drugs. But, you know what I'm saying? Not to say it's a good thing. I'm so, just trying to tie that in. But that goes what into I the conversation yeah. of, and I'm going to bring, I'm going to put my second question yeah. on hold, right? And this might be a hard question for us because we already here. Right. But I think, I said something to somebody one time and they, they didn't really understand what I was saying. And I think, you know, people should date in their tax bracket, mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I feel like I tell people all the time, I feel like I I, I went outside of my lane to date Sade because clearly like her lifestyle isn't the lifestyle that I'm used to or that I even agree with. Question. Just stop you right there. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that advanced you though? Like the motivation of knowing that, do you feel like that made you move faster in to what you're doing now? You because you got experience. Doing it? I'm just curious. Um, I don't think it advanced me, uh -huh. but what I do say is, I mean, it definitely make me work harder, Okay, but I think, because like she said, like, so I'm going to just be completely transparent. I feel like for me, it definitely put a lot of pressure on me because okay. it's like, I want to make my woman happy. 
I'm the type of person, like, I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if this is what she used to, I want to give you that. Mm -hmm. But it's also frustrating as well because that's mm -hmm. just not who I am. Right. However, so it's too, like, it's balanced, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, like, one part of me is like, yo, I'm going to work extra harder so I can be able to have fun mm -hmm. and keep up with all of my bills that I want to, right? Mm -hmm. But I just feel like if you don't, if you date within your tax bracket inside your lane, however you want to say it, I feel like those are the problems that you might not run right. into or because then it's like they y'all already on the right, same level. Right. right. And it's crazy, you know, you know, I'm just giving myself my own flowers because, you know, I can say <laughs> I know, right? To my own fucking horn. I can say that I have seen how Jay is very competitive and he does like want to, you know what I'm saying? He wants to spoil me in the ways that he knows that I like to be spoiled. And he does a really good job at that. So because of that, and because I've seen that, I try to step back now. Like mm. even yesterday, like he was like, I did want to go out, you know what I'm saying? Like at first I was like, cause I was supposed to go somewhere else. It was my friend's birthday, but she en ended up canceling. And I did want to go out. And Jay was like, do you really, you want to go out? Cause we could go out. But I knew I'm like, babe, we don't gotta go out. We could just stay in. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, give me some. And I was like, yeah, it's it what like I mean, yeah, I did. I, you know she got, shout out to you for that. Yeah, because but we still end up paying like a hundred dollars for food. That was on your behalf, though, because you wanted to go there. So, see, yeah, that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, that's see, because, yeah, you see, yeah, yeah. and we had this that's conversation true. on the last podcast. See, it, you know, when I want to spend money is... Bah, when he wants to <laughs> spend money, when he wants to spend money is... I mean, but the food good. You know what I'm saying? Like the <laughs> food right, good right, there. Right. You, you know, you do you do want to eat good. So you know what I'm saying? I don't mind going there. And then he tried to put me in a trick bag. Like you want to go there? I'm like, nigga, you want to go there? Don't ask me, <laughs> nigga. You want to go? So just say you want to go. If you want to eat good, just say that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, but other than that, like you know, but all that to say, back to it still can be a toxic. Uh, or a, a enabling okay. because I, like I compared it to like a drug like people pay for their drugs like my vice is you know I spend money like I like to I like nice things you know what I'm saying I like you know what I'm saying like all everything you know quality I just like right. you know and I do believe that you know we as people should be able to enjoy a, a life of luxury and that's just something I think we all deserve you know we all grew up a certain way or we all had to deal with certain things so it does come to a point in life like I want to live in luxury however I'm willing to sacrifice certain ways that Jay's just like nah like mm. you know what I'm saying and not to say his ways are good like he has very he's very he Jay is very frugal in a good way me I'm like I want to have a good time I'm doing it like money going to come back. Like, that's just how I think. So sometimes I don't really think is dating in your tax bracket. It's just that it's just two different ways of thinking because mm. we could be in the same tax bracket. And I still say, I still think like that. So I'll pay my bills right there. You'll want to save your extra money. But I, my extra money, I want to go. Yeah, facts. Because I knew it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy because we yeah. definitely like, even did the math when it comes to numbers and like. I mean, I get paid. Pretty, yeah, no, pretty Jay, decent. Jay <laughs> getting money. He nah. been real money. No, nah, so but what I want to say is, work hard. So, so maybe they say you work hard. Fit, you feel mm, what I'm saying? Mm, we all got this. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like I tried, I tried. I said, I said okay. it to say, yeah, you you are right with that, with that because yeah. I feel like you know I just like to manage my money differently. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I manage my and he's better at managing. For his me, money I wouldn't have I no am. fun. I am not going. I probably have fun like once a year. Once a year. Me, I'm like every other month. If I Cause like I really be like then I, really I got a girlfriend like, and then right now food we had is five dollars like no twenty four times a year without a girlfriend trips. he eats noodles with a girlfriend he eating lobster lobster <laughs> you know what I'm saying so the bill nigga up. like me I go to the grocery store get the noodles and we can get the uh. The, the fake lobster, you know what I'm saying? What they call it? The, the imitation the crab. The imitation crab. You, know, you, know you hit, put it in the noodles, <laughs> yeah, and now I, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just having a talk with my girl, right? Yeah. I was just having a talk with my girl, and I really, like, you know what I'm saying? We getting older, and I just feel like, I really just, like, for example, you know how people would, like, save your new clothes? For when you're going out, I want to wear me. my new clothes because I want it to become a part of my normal. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And I really do feel like I'm trying to att attract that. So I'm going to keep buying quality until I'm up in quality. And life is short. Fuck you talking about we in a whole panoramic. Like, niggas is dying. Hey, babe, I ain't gonna lie. I love you. But that's just something we ain't like me. I want to wear my new clothes when I'm going out, man. I ain't trying to. I want to have. Wear my new clothes going sitting in the house, going to shop right. I want new clothes, so even when I wear my new clothes, I got more new clothes to where to go out. See, that's what I'm saying. So, babe, how do we? So honestly, for because I feel like a lot of relationships do go through that, right? Like I feel like the man want to manage the money, or not everybody, but a lot of relationships, men want to be frugal with the money and save the money when a girl want to spend. Like, how do we balance that in relationships as couples? Make more like money. Said, that's think, weird facts. Like, that's the only way I can see. The like, pandemic. Make more money. Like shit. You feel what that's the only thing I can like think of. But for people that can't just make more money. Yeah. Right there. Like and I there. said, I really think it's a balance. And I feel like we just now, you know, Jay and I, three year anniversary is coming up in a couple weeks. Just let you guys know. Um, yeah, shit, look at your money. motherfucking watch. Get more money. <laughs> look at your motherfucking watch. Yes, more money. I already told him what I wanted and I expected. It. It's like, um, 
just to say, yeah, um, hold up, you fucked up. Let yeah, me stop. You, you got did. in a relationship at, around Valentine's Day? You ain't think this through? So, 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 okay, so, so, okay, so, okay, 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 so here, here's the real truth, okay, through? here's the real truth behind that, Please right? Tell the truth. Jay, shut, shut up, <laughs> shut up. Because she came up to my crib around Valentine's Day and I just, you know what I'm saying? Why sit down? <laughs> Fuck. First of Thanks. all, getting the tea here. she Look. pulled up and I'm like, babe, what's up? No, and she was like, that's Shit, I'm not you fucking too. what happened. He's lying. <laughs> it is what? No, we, no, we went to a concert. We went on our way home. I went to Rite Aid. She said, he yo, make sure you get a condom. Excuse me. <laughs> hey. That's he what she said. Uh, okay, so this is what that wasn't our. Okay, that was our first. <laughs> it was our, okay, so first day. hold on, time the fuck out. She said, make sure you get a condom. I got you, babe. I'm like, damn. I'm in Hold up. For a You're gonna tell the whole fucking truth and the whole fucking truth so I help you fucking guy. Yeah, I'm, okay? looking, I'm looking at so, uh, fucking uh, teddy bears. I come out just to ask her something. She's like, you got condoms. I'm like, oh, I ain't getting no teddy bear. Fuck it. Like, fuck it. I was about to get roses and everything. She's like, get condoms. I'm like, oh, I don't need no teddy so, bear. So, okay, so. The work is done. The work is done. <laughs> the work is done. She had fun at the concert. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Migos. I think it was a Migos concert. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, here's what the fuck happened, actually. I know exactly what's concert right? you're talking about. <laughs> Jay and I met a couple weeks before that, right? It was two weeks to be exact. It was two weeks to be exact, right? <clears throat> we met, we had a great night, we vibe. We was already talking up until then, but I kept swerving on Jay a little bit. Like he wanted to see me. I had, you know what I'm saying? I was swerving a little bit, whatever. Our first real date was the day before Valentine's Day. It was February 13th. Mm -hmm. He invites me to this concert, whatever. And it was a vibe. We had a great night, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And yes, I already knew and I wanted to fuck. I did. So... <laughs> Period. So what happened was so I put the we get back. we was we, no. This is what no. That's not shut. More shut up. <laughs> so what happened was on the way. So mind you, Jay, I'm, I'm living in Silver Spring. So Jay lives in Baltimore. Oh, so wow. I had pulled up, drove. I drove to him. We drove from his house to the concert. So when we go back, we have to go back to his house. On the way there, we stop at the store. He was contemplating flowers and roses in the store, but yeah. he didn't know if it was too much because it was technically really, we were talking up until then, but it was really our, our real first, first yeah. date. You right. feel what I'm saying? So he gets to the car. I'm not thinking he's getting me teddy bears and roses. So I thought he was in that motherfucking getting condoms. So when he gets to the car, he has no bag. I think I asked her. <laughs> so me, I'm, like, I'm a nigga that's asking you know, everything. I'm like, did I ask? Was it too much or something? Like, yo, No, nah, he asked. He came in the car. He was like, I was going to get you teddy bears, but I didn't know if it was too much. So I'm like, nigga, you I got no you bag. Didn't. Where's the condom? So, fuck the teddy bear so, roses. So he, you know, his little, his little, his little eyes twinkled up. He had a little <laughs> eyes in his eyes. He was like, really? So, really? You know what I'm saying? He go back, get the condom. You know what I'm saying? No so teddy yes, bear roses. No teddy bear roses. I ain't need that that day. Um, so you're paying for it now, as you yeah, know. Yeah. You know, you should have got the you're teddy right. bear and roses because now you paying huh. for a double. So triple, quadruple. So you know, boom, he busted down. So the thing is, Jay and I. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she already said on the first date. I mean, well, the first time I met her, not the first date, I had to pay for our friends' drinks and if I didn't, I didn't so you say paid that your dues. To him. You're saying you paid. He, your dues. I didn't even know that. No, I didn't say he had to. However, he took it upon himself to do it. However, yeah, in my mind, I'm like, oh, the nigga done bought it for the team. There we go. I like that. We went to the bar by ourselves. He orders the gang drink. He's like, I guess I gotta get all our friends' drinks. So, I did you know not want to do that, fellas. Just letting y'all know. I'm going to tell you what happened, though. Know. I, I was going to gonna buy that. all my friends drinks. And I think when he seen that I was about to pay for it, he decided to pay for it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Man time. I fuck with that. You feel what I'm saying? Long story short. So, from that moment, though, from that moment that, you know, he busted down the day going on Valentine's Day at that point. From actually, that moment, you knew that I was going to get this pussy. No. From that moment. <laughs> Basically. You already had the pussy at that time. Woo! At that point. Oh, oh. But what I'm saying is, from that moment, Valentine's mm. Day, we were inseparable. Like yeah, yeah. literally, no, I will, yeah, facts. I we were inseparable, so we, we don't, don't really have, a, have a anniversary yeah. because it was just like we were inseparable, and it was just like you know you my nigga, you know my girl, like and he like you know what I'm saying I remember the first day he told me he love you, <laughs> so um. <laughs> I also said don't get it fucked up because you my homie, but you know what I'm saying. That's hold up, time out. No. Don't don't get that's not what the fuck happened. That's baby. not what happened. Okay, I'm gonna it. tell you. I can tell you another time, but we're gonna say that for another one. But. Long story short, we don't really have a real anniversary date because mm. we were inseparable since that moment. So we celebrate the day before Valentine's Day because so, that was our first yeah, real date. And it goes into Valentine's Day because the first day we would say, put it, we would say, put it down. And he knew I ain't let her go nowhere. So that was that. 
Mm. So our anniversary okay. is February 13th. Okay. So, but not honestly, how, do, how, how does a couple, so to get back to the question, how does a couple, you know, balance that out with like the woman want to always spend and so, the man probably not want to spend <clears> as much? So what I was going to say is, you know, coming on three years, it hasn't been easy. Like that's mm-hmm. something we actually used to argue about this. Like, you know what I'm saying? He used to get on my nerves talking to me about finances because that's just the way I like to live my life with my money. You know what I'm saying? But when we started doing things together and paying bills together, then it became like a little problematic. So over time, it just, it more so became a consideration thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now I'm like, you know, it comes to a time. It's like, you know, you see somebody doing a lot. You, you, you gotta be considerate. Like, so it's like, now I can't be like, babe, do this or get this. Cause it's like, I know what you're going through. And I know, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like the lifestyle ch- changes we have made, especially, you know, him adjusting more so to my lifestyle of what I like to do. You know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, I may have sacrificed in other ways, but it doesn't take away from the point that he's sacrificed to live in rooms that I like to live in. You know what I'm saying? So I have to be more considerate and I can't just be like, Oh, babe, well, I'm going to take a trip this weekend just because. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, we can't do that. Like, I know he's busting his ass and he's working and he's doing these things. You know what I'm saying? However, he does make up for it because it might not be this weekend. But when we do do it, he goes all out and it's a vibe. Like, you get what I'm saying? So it's just really being more considerate um, and more thoughtful of the other person and what they're dealing with and what they're going through. So that way we can do that. We can have a balance and nobody feels overworked because then it's like, damn, like you set that one out. I appreciate that. And really, ladies, just a little tip. You sit one out. Damn, babe, you set that up. I'm gonna go extra hard for when we do. Do you think women are like are yeah. considerate? A lot of women, like, what? How do you see um, that in, in your circle? Like, you know, of well, I, you know, to speak on it, like, you know, girls. I think by default we came to the term, like, you know, uh, you know, it's always been. I think like my man spoils me. My man spoils me, and I think that women so caught up on being spoiled and what they're getting, they forget that, like, damn, did you knew what it took. To, for him to spoil you so you know and I think we all go through that moment and you know what I'm saying you know some women still live in it but some you know grown ass women you know after a while it's like damn like he do a lot like you know what I'm saying he goes out his way mm. like he really makes it happen so let me be considerate and be thoughtful mm. you know what I'm saying like I can't speak for all women that they got that mindset yet because you know I do still still see women and I know male friends who still feel unappreciative because you know women never feel like it's enough or mm. like or don't look at the thought behind it um however like i said the more you grow into a grown-ass woman you kind of understand yeah passing the hookah and everything it's a beautiful thing you feel what I'm saying? so i have a question how do you like going back to the enabling how do you find a balance or well, not the balance as opposed to enabling to empower instead of mm. enabling behavior empowering them to mm. do what you believe so it's not like a contradiction yeah. of your enabling toxic behavior yeah. but rather empower them to do what they should be doing mm. how do you feel like you find that balance so like or, for example like just for the example we were talking about right like the spending thing i think um for, for me and this is why i'm enabled right i think like when it comes to putting my foot down i think if i was to put my foot down more often and say what i want and instead of like just just trying to make her happy right or trying to please her let's not say make her happy let's say instead of trying to please her all the time if i was to put my foot down more i think it would be easier for her to understand why why, right and Mm. explain it not just put my foot down but explaining why not right not just saying no but saying yo we we are in this place let's write these bills out right let me show you so instead of assuming right right? and then what happens is if i say that enough times because of course it's not going to happen the first or two or second time right but if i say it enough times eventually she will then pay attention and start thinking about finances in a way that i might think about it right because now it's like Oh shit! All right, bet. Hey, hey, bay. Uh, I remember when you were talking about this. Did yeah. you pay that bill yet, or yeah. did, did we take care of this yet? Yeah. Where we at with finances? Instead yeah. of like, bay, let's go to yeah. Jamaica or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a way to empower. Yeah. It's, it's kind of no difference than like you know what I'm saying. Having a man who has a busy schedule, like get a calendar. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you got to meet somebody halfway. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he said, like you know, I think women. You have to, it's almost like you have to like break it down for us to make sense. You can't just talk to us, like talk at us and just tell us like, no, we're not going. But if you say like, bae, like, you know what I'm saying? I'd love to go. You know what I'm saying? However, you know what I'm saying? There is some other things that we have to tie up these loose ends first and then we could go. So we might can't go this time, but how about let's try to clear this up and by this time we can go. So so let's work on that. I'm not the only person that is probably, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not alone when it comes to worrying right when it comes oh, to like I don't yeah. know, the next gig hell or how yeah. you want to get it right how, yeah. for, for somebody that might be a chronic worrier 
How did you? Because you said you used to be like that. How did you get over that? Like, how did you get over that hump of oh, worrying? Well, so how you know, can you empower so me? So it's crazy those, because I really else? do see it more in entrepreneurs, and it's crazy to say. Like, you know, a lot of people have chronic worrying on them. Mm -hmm. However, I see a lot more in entrepreneurs because like you said, like they don't know when's the next time they're mm -hmm. going to get it. They don't know the certainty of the money. And like sometimes it may, you maybe get five bins and another week you might get $50 and it's a, it's a complete difference That's in a, a fact, gap. So though. you try to preserve, <laughs> not real shit. You try to preserve your money as long as you can. Cause you don't know when you're going to be up again. You get what I'm saying? And all that I could say is, you know, just having faith that your business always going to boom. Because like, I think at a certain point, mm -hmm. like you can't keep living to live like you like like you can't keep living to pay to bills water. A man right is not to you live gotta to live water. life like yeah. you you still want to live life so i do think it has to come with a certain amount of faith like you know what i'm saying like you know yeah i might not only got five thousand this time and i might only get 50 but i know god looking out for me like one way or another i'm gonna get the money like so you know what i'm saying the money's gonna fall in my lap like at some point because as always you it get always the money works out. And you always it works out and my, that's just proofs in the pudding that goes into my second question that yeah. i asked before right i feel like how do we measure happiness? Because, mm. you know, a lot of people say money can't make you happy, but a lot of times we're worrying about money, yeah. right? We're worrying about finances yeah. and how we're going to... It's not even the, the, the physical dollar. Yeah. It's the, the things that the dollar well, helps. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. for example, hypothetically, let's say rent, right? Yeah. You're not, I'm not worried about the money. I'm worried about having a roof over my head because exactly. that's what makes me happy. Exactly. But in, to, in, in order to keep a roof over my head, I, I need, need the money. The money. I right. think with money, something that like, well, actually we read it in... 50 cents book it's the freedom yeah. you know a lot of people what what the dollar sign represents is freedom, freedom. you have the freedom to Man. get and purchase mm -hmm. what may be able mm -hmm. yeah you That's know so crazy. it's a lot of that mm -hmm. understanding and the worry is on that because you know right. that is a key that, yeah. that key freedom. can open the door yeah. to what you're That's looking for yeah. That's wild. yeah and yeah That's so yeah. do you think you can be happy like how yeah. how do i find happiness without that freedom from a uh, monetary gain. Right. Mm -hmm. How can somebody find well, happiness? Well, I think you just have to learn to be happy with the journey because, like, you know, a lot of times, like, people are always waiting for some ending for the happy. Like, literally, that's why the term happy ending is there. It's like happy ending. So you're waiting for the end of whatever your the journey to get happy. Or, like, I'm waiting for this to be over to complete so I could get the money so I could be happy. It's like, oh, it's always that end. But I really feel like you don't have to be happy at the end. Just be at peace where Just you are. Just be at peace of where you are. Just be at peace. Because at then peace, it attracts honestly. to you. Like, yeah, even last night, me, him, and Amaya were talking, and it was like, I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm like, I, I, don't say you're broke. Financial because you transition. attract mm -hmm. you attract money. We gotta, we gotta remember, we attract whatever we believe. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, we can't keep saying we're broke. Nobody's broke. You know what I'm saying? Our money's just, I was like, our, I didn't use that word. I wish I did. But I was like, our money's just tied up in other things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But more money is going to come. Like, But again, like you said, just being at peace where you are and knowing that it's not a happy ending. It's happy right now. It's happy mm -hmm. ongoing. It's happy. I'm happy when my money's tied up and I'm happy when I got the money because now my money's not tied up. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, what they say, like, if you have worries, you should be happy. But how do because you like find... I got a roof, because so I need money. But guess what? I got a, I roof. Got a roof. But how do you yeah. find that happiness though? Because I feel like it's easier to say, yeah. yo, you know, be happy for these things. But how do you find that? Like how how have you found it? Um, to me, I ain't gonna lie to you. So I'm a I pray a lot. Mm. And one thing I pray all the time. I don't pray for happiness. I pray to be happy in my transitions or along the journey, mm. like to whatever I'm trying to get to. So it's like, you got, you really got to, you really sometimes like, if it ain't in you, you got to pray for it to get in you. You know what I'm saying? Cause sometimes it's not happy times. Like sometimes it is like, you know what I'm saying? That's not to say like, I'm always perfect at that either because like we all are going to have our days where it's like, Oh, I'm just unhappy with this. But just remember, that's just a moment. You know what I'm saying? And you got to learn to ask for what you want. Like I ask God, like God, like I'm not feeling happy right now. Can you give me the patience and the strength? while I get to that space. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of it you, is just patience. You know what helps me be happy, honestly? And mm -hmm. it's crazy. I don't think I had this yeah. conversation with you. But shout out to my therapist, like Marcus. And I keep speak, speaking about this because like, it's my first time ever having yeah. therapy and it's so dope. And I know that like sometimes everybody isn't as fortunate as me. And that's yeah. why I appreciate my therapist mm -hmm. so much. You get what I'm saying? But it's, it's been times where I wish I could do therapy five days a week because on Tuesdays, bro, that's probably like... Like on Monday night mm -hmm. is one of my best nights because it's like I know that I'm gonna wake up and, and have somebody to mm -hmm. speak to. Yeah, and release right? it. Right. And I feel like if if you gotta find therapy through church, you might have to find yeah. it through church. Or you have to find yeah. therapy to through, I don't know, going mm -hmm. for a walk. Mm -hmm. That's how you can find your happiness right. because it's it's weird. I would have never said this. And it's yeah. like I 
like I was in a um, bathroom um, earlier. It's like, man, I'm so upset that I missed Tuesday because it was like it just that Tuesday just bro it takes off the strain. You get yeah. it's, it's and, and it help. It's not even just taking off the strain. It it it, it helps you in a way to to maneuver yeah, through you through endurance. your week, right? Yeah. Like, like let's say I'm I'm bad at scheduling, right? That's the foundation. Exactly. Kinda. I'm talking mm-hmm. to my therapist saying, all right, we got to work on this, this, and that. Is a is a, a sense of accountability. Right. Yep. And it's now that okay. I need money to get the rent paid. I'm talking to my therapist. I'm gonna tell him that, right? Then we're gonna figure out how, how we, we get the, the rent right? paid, and it's so dope, right? And like, what I think that's you just touch for me. On, I think what you touch on is really just accountability when yeah. it really boils down to it. It's just like you know, accountability of where you are in your space, being okay that you're there, and finding solutions to get out mm. of that space. Right? I, you know what I mean? I, and to add to that, accountability in perception. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the number one thing is that with uh, whether your religion, church, or therapy, well, a lot of things is when you have conversations, it shapes your perception. Yeah. And you may That's be seeing that something that is like a detriment, yeah. like this, this is a dead situation, yeah. but you're looking at it from this side, you yeah. know what I mean? Whereas yeah. like half glass full or yeah. empty, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like when we have these conversations, it definitely switches, switches. our perspective yeah. and that brings forth the happiness because the situation may be dire, right. but you can't do anything, yeah. right? you know what I mean? And if it's something that's yeah. out of your control, why are you stressing? Exactly. So but I then would once just, you stick it the other way, it just changes that. Yeah. I would just, you know, like, like make it important for people to have somebody to talk to like right. outside of your yeah your, 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 yeah you know the person that you're with because right. like the person that you're with is not supposed to be a yeah. therapist because yeah. the way i talk to my therapist the things i say about yeah. my partner good or bad you know what i'm saying like or indifferent right he's not there to judge me right yeah. you got to find that person that you can talk to mm-hmm. and that they can be unbiased in the situation and they can bring clarity to you they can hold right. you accountable right. as well and just to leave people with something because i know it's going to be somebody who watches this like i really just don't have anybody to talk to because that's another thing like i think sometimes we go through periods of times where we feel like we really can't talk to nobody whether it's our significant other whether it's friends whether it's parents or whatever you feel like you really can't talk to them i really do encourage just spending more time with yourself because the minute you can have those accountable accountable conversations with yourself as well you are literally guiding yourself like you know what i'm saying like how they say the answer is really always within us like you know mm. what i'm saying sometimes we need help bringing it out but like the more time you spend with yourself sometimes you're really spending it with yourself you, you're really getting your inside answers that you already know that it's just that sometimes you don't want to face them but the more times you spend with yourself you can find it too you know yeah. what i'm saying so if you don't have somebody to talk to you know, try to take some time for yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I say on Friday, I went for a hike, but that's just something like, I, you know, I spoke about that a couple of times on the podcast. Like I go to different places just to get tranquility or mm-hmm. serenity by myself, like just to sit and just like think real quick or like just walk like or just like, you know, what I'm saying just really let my hear my own fucking thoughts. Like, you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. and so, I just babe, think that's important not to drag this on. But, yeah. you know, we was having I was having this conversation this morning um, and we we're actually on Clubhouse. So shout out to them. But, you know. It was a it was a very transparent conversation of <clears throat> men in relationships not feeling like they can mm-hmm. have time to themselves or if they do mm-hmm. have time to themselves they have to lie about it because I feel mm-hmm. like woman wow. if you tell your woman like that you're by yourself yeah well, if you yeah. tell your woman why is it that yeah. if I tell my woman like yo I need some me time yeah. that they don't take it as yeah. really as what it is right. I need me time it's so funny why, why does that bother you it's so you funny not? you brought that up because I was just having a, a conversation with my homegirl and the question she asked me she was like how much time do you talk to your partner through the day? And, you know, at first I was like, damn, like when Jay goes to work and I'm working from home, we really don't talk that much through the day. And, you know, it was a, it was a two sided perspective. I looked on because one side of the perspective, I was like, damn, like, do we not talk enough? Like, but then I thought about it. I was like, well, realistically, that's his time to himself. And that's my time to myself. Like, I don't have to be talking to him all day. And because I trust that, I don't think he's doing nothing. I know he's working. I know he's doing his thing. I don't really care because I'm doing my thing and I'm doing my work. Like, you know what I'm saying? So all that to say is, um, I think it's very important that, you know, we can trust enough to be away from our partner where they can have time for themselves with us out, without us taking it personal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I also think that includes like every... that. A lot of times I feel like females don't like it because they're not doing it for themselves. Mm. So they don't like when a man go do it because it's like... Well, I don't take time without you. I always want to be up under you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, because you want to step out by yourself, now you got to be doing something. It's, but that's not true. It's, it's just that I, as a female, we have to be okay with taking time out for ourselves too. So just to say, like in the beginning, I was like, damn, do me and Jay not talking up? But I was like, no, nah, I'm okay with that. Because through his day when he's working, I, like as long as we get check in and do some reassurance, you good? What you doing? Like, are you good? Like, just to make sure you can have your but outside, time. But outside like, of work, do yeah, you, do yeah, you, for do sure. You, do you think you would be as su- su- susceptible? 
Uh, is that okay. a word? Okay. Success- susceptible. Susceptible. Right. Day. right. I, <laughs> would you be susceptible if I said, "Yo, I just need some me time. I'm about to go out real quick." How? How? Honestly, how do you think you? Um. Would take so it? I'll be honest. Like you know. So I think what happens is nobody ever does it, and then out of sudden it's abrupt. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Okay. And so somebody's like. What? You don't never do that. Did like, you all trigger? Sudden, did I, it's okay. like, it's like, like, like did I do sudden, something? Okay. Did you, like, did it, like, is it mm-hmm. you, what you don't want to be around me? Oh, what you got mm-hmm. something to do? Oh, it's a bitch you about to go see? Oh, oh, what you want? Like, it's something. But if we communicate in a way where Beforehand. we make it into our routine, like, look, we need to take mm-hmm. more time out to ourselves just so we can Damn. make sure we can sit with ourselves. Then it's not so abrupt where we don't know it's not happening. I like and that. it's like, I, I can't feel no way now because I knew that was, like, I know that's a part of what we should be doing. So now I got to hold myself accountable. Like, you did say that. We mm-hmm. did say we were gonna do that. So go ahead, take your time. I'm gonna go take my time tomorrow. I like that. That's that's I like that. Let's um keep it moving. We talking about uh we was talking you know about I mean? this Danny Lay situation, right? Yes, sir. And with that came... So what so, so let's break down for the people what the fuck is going on with Danny Lay, Miss So Miss Danny Lay, if you don't know who she is, she's the baby's girl. Are, are they in a relationship? Is it official? I, they I claim so. all right. Well, they're doing something together. But she dropped a song titled yellow bone uh where the rapper teased on the track yellow bone that's what he wants and she basically wrote like along with she teased that along with the song people heard the song and there was another part that we just heard that right. people really didn't like but even and, even before that i'm sorry bro but even before that i think you know a lot of people are what i've heard is she can't really call herself a yellow bone because that came from an african descent mm-hmm. I, I don't know is, how true that is she's uh, dominican. dominican yeah Alleged, but yeah i just, see i didn't even know that I can see how, but I didn't know that yellow bone well, came from us, basically. Well, you know, so I guess it's and that. And when I say I us, guess, black people. I, I guess it's that line because you know, Dominicans associate themselves with African American. Mm. They some sometimes. Some. But, can, some. Say. Some. but can you? Some. But can you? Asso- can you can I would you, say Puerto Ricans more so. But can you associate Dominicans? Some. Can you associate yeah. yourself with us if you aren't us? Yeah. Well, can you well do that? what changed okay. the pigment? I think it's yeah. like you got to understand ethnics versus race and like what is determines yeah. what makes you black yeah. versus what language you speak. You know what I mean? Just because you speak Spanish doesn't mean. Yeah, because all time. Right, um, right, right. Um, yeah, because it's Dominicans. like. Dominicans. You have it's, black it's, Dominicans. You have, yeah. you have and all also, types like, of you Dominicans. got Costa Ricans. You got like all type of. You know uh, what they would call Latinas, like what they call them, Afro Latinas, mm-hmm. or you like know, Amer- La Nagra, like America, exactly. yeah. like Julian. You're Afro Latina. Wow. Oh, see? see. Oh, yeah. So it's Lex. Okay. See, like in, they're black. You can't tell them they're not black. You know mm. what I'm saying? So again, just speaking to where Alex come from, it just, you know, just doing your research and knowing where you come from and knowing what, because like you could, for example, you know, sometimes in certain countries, you know, they get the same, just like America. They get the same, y'all are black, they're really the Hispanics. So right. we treat you guys different, even though they're from the same island. But because they're darker skinned, they get the same treatment that us. And only thing I will say to that, I don't know what her dad, I don't know what her parents look like. I think people did say they seen her parents and they were like, they're, they're very much Hispanic. However, I don't know who her grandfather may be dark skinned. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know. So I can't really say she's not entitled to call herself a red bone because she doesn't, because if she does, associate herself with african-american descent. okay yeah. so i think when it comes to just the danny lay situation i yeah. feel like a lot of people were upset because she did the moment you compare like the moment you you put yourself over top of another race or make yourself um what did she say so we want to play the song yeah you, let's you play the song. Let's uh play the song. yeah i actually can find it um you had it right i had it i had it okay. i had it i mean um let me go to it i'll play the song Um. Everybody's like, hmm. Yeah, this song is not even All right. good. Let's start not there. Cheat, <laughs> not cheat them cooking over there. <laughs> not. I rest a little stiff. <laughs> Riding around with COVID. <laughs> There you go, so right I there. think that's I think that was the 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 real problem is when she said he need a lit chick, mm-hmm. so he had to switch switch, switch switch. And I guess because she's with the baby and he has a dark skinned child, he has he had a dark skinned woman, mother. baby yeah. mother. So it's like okay, so you're saying that to to upgrade 
you had to go with a light skinned chick. Child. And I think that's where a lot of people looked at it wrong. Ooh, it's like, child. that's where you fucked up at. And then she didn't make it better because she then went on social media and says, why can't I make a song for my light skinned baddies? Why do y'all think I'm hating on other colors when there are millions of songs speaking on all type? Why y'all so sensitive and taking it so personal? Because of the, so, you need a lit, like, it's like you, so, you made right, the, right. You, you did that, yeah, right? So yeah. I, at first I didn't understand, but yeah. you said he needed he somebody lit. lit. So in order to be with somebody lit, he had, he had to have somebody light skin. a yellow bone. So this is what I will say. So, okay. So before I heard that part, right. And I just seen her quote where she's like, why can't I make a song for light skin baddies? And you know, you, you listen to songs like Beyonce. That's like brown skin girl. They're empowering. They're just, but it's an empowering song, right? It's in, it's empowering. When you switch the narrative from empowering to belittling, mm -hmm. then I think we're talking about something different. When I heard her say that, I just felt like you stupid. That was stupid. That was very stupid of you. Only because I also feel like with a platform and being an influencer as you are, and you're a big enough artist to know, like at the end of the day, we're still in the most detri time, detrimental time of race right now. You feel what I'm saying? So to even play into that division, to me, you have no self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that part either. Um, and it's also just true. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like that is so belittling especially with the dark skinned man with yeah. dark skinned little girls, but you're going to go try to play step mommy later. So how do you translate that message to them? Like saying like, you know what I'm saying? Like if he, how do you with, tell him that uh, right. if he's, he, he got a switch switch to get yeah. how do you lit because he need a beautiful. yellow bone. How do you like, tell them that they're beautiful and they're lit? But, but, you're the saying, a man, but a you're man saying. might switch on you to go be with somebody litter because she yellow bone. I don't understand that right. logic. And like, I think that's, that's where a lot cool. of people said it was messed up because if you yeah. look at, I didn't even, it's this this whole conversation made me look at it so many mm -hmm. ways, right? Because like I didn't even understand the definition of colorism until I looked at it, right? right. So when you're talking about colorism and, and the definition is prejudice uh, or discrimination, especially within a racial or ethnic group uh, favoring people with lighter skin over a darker skin, that directly is colorism, like literally like to the definition. So I'm like, damn. So of course I will understand why a darker, uh, mm -hmm. darker skinned woman would be more upset. As they should though. Yeah. I, I think as they should, like you want, see the thing is about, I don't think that some artists realize is you want all your fans. You don't care if they light, they white, they brown, they blue, they purple. And you want that brown support because as you know, we make this dollar go round. So my thing is, how dare you do that and still expect the same support of the of the many brown skinned women, dark skinned women that were supporting you at the time, how do you not expect to lose that? But even deeper than that, right, it's crazy because if you look at the history of our country, Boom. right, like it's, it's, it's fucked up because we have, we can't sit up here and act like we haven't seen, that's why we have a definition yeah. of colorism because yep. we have seen yep. like people leaning towards yep. the lighter skinned yep. women, the fairer skinned people, yep. at, at, like they get all the they, opportunities. They, they set us apart. They yeah. divided us. And like also, they divide you know, us and it's like we're dividing each it, other. It, it's even already a stigma that um, I think like before, you know, since Santana had this backlash of when basically she said that black women, black men, don't quote me, it's not verbatim, but basically black men liking Latino women more over black women because they're more you know, catering to their men mm -hmm. and they do all these things to their men. And it's like, why play into that hand? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like she's blatantly saying, like, I mean, you get what I'm saying? Like, and I just don't. So what I will I say, for that. you know, I'm going to go out on a limb yeah. on this. I know a lot of people might, might not agree, but I think, you know, what happens is we got to look at our history. Right, I don't know what she said after the tweet. I don't know if she came back and apologized and said she was wrong. But a lot of times, it's I different. haven't seen an apology yet. Okay, am I saying it's me different? personally? If okay, because it's, it's a different. What she it's, said. it's difference between being ignorant. Yeah. Like, it's okay to be ignorant as long as you're seeking the truth like, and you're seeking knowledge. But when you're purposely ignorant, then that's when it's a problem. What I will say is just from because I don't know if she's apologized mm -hmm. just from the surface level. Right, uh -huh. I think when it comes to this situation, it comes to add back to our history. We've got to look at how, yeah. we, how we were raised, right? So even before how we were raised, you got to understand, white people separated us, mm -hmm. period, right? So if you even want to go to slavery, right? white people raped our woman, then they became, they went from a field nigger, per se, to a house nigger, yep. right? Now, guess what? Guess what that did to our community? It yep. divided us. That divided us, why? Mm -hmm. Because the field niggers yeah. are now jealous of the house niggas because why they want to be in the, treatment. They want to be in the house as well, yeah. right? They getting special treatment one, and now it's like they might be thinking like, of course I'm not a slave and I can't, mm -hmm. I can't put myself in that situation. But I'm just, I'm just thinking that maybe a slave would say, "Yo, 
I'm tired. I'm getting hurt. Maybe if I was raped or became a house nigga, now I'm in the house. And you see where that fucks us up as a culture? Now it's like we're taking one fucked up situation to put ourselves in another fucked up situation because yeah. of some, what somebody else did to us yeah. and that's just fucked up. And so to add to that, I would say it comes down to educating yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because what, what she said, like, it shows that you really don't understand the history. Right. And that's like, what I was saying. That's basically what I was and, going and, at. I was saying that from even, the, from okay. the, I'm sorry, from the book. From the beginning, this is what we saw. So that's what yeah. we know. So if I'm just saying, because I don't know if it's been an apology, but I'm just saying from the surface level, when I look at this, I say, let's give her a little bit of grace because we don't, well, she's not black, so I yeah. can't say that. Yeah. Right. But it's like, I'm just saying, because I am black, it's like, damn, I can see how somebody well, would be I go, Dominican. I so go, that's the whole conversation. Well, in I want to go itself. a little damn. deeper too. Go ahead. And you know, I just want to like, I'm going to just put it out there. Even in society today, and even when I was a little younger, you know, it was always light-skinned women thought they were better than brown-skinned and African-American women. Because and of what we were taught, Yeah, because right? of what we were taught. And the thing is, I don't, I don't want to call it pure ignorance because I know that she knows that. Mm, okay. I know that she knows that I, I she's seen other dark-skinned or brown-skinned women be treated differently around her. I got you. And as a brown-skinned you know, female, I personally, so just to get a little transparent, right? So I have a best friend of 20 years. I've known her since I was, damn, not, damn, 21 years. I've known her since I was eight years old. Don't do that math, fuck y'all. So <laughs> I knew her since I was eight years old. She's white and she's black. Uh, she looks, uh, historically when she was younger, she used to look a, a Hispanic, right? Um, and we went to the same school, did everything together. And there was plenty of times that she either got treated better than I do, or I even had people say because she was light skinned, she looked better than I did. And as we grew up, like, you know what I'm saying? Like even to current, you know, day, like, so, you know, and this is just transparent. I love her to death. She knows that we, you know, we talk all the time. You know, when I went to go visit her, she moved to Arizona, which is predominantly a white state. You get what I'm saying? She moved to Arizona. And when I went out there, it was her and her other mixed friends. And they're all light skin, long hair. You know, I go out there, brown skin, long red hair. I'm already, and they made so many comments that they don't even, they're so used to being able to do it that they don't pay attention to where they do it. It was just a lot of comments like, oh, okay. Um, for example, you know, typically browner skin when you look on a shade browner to darker we have different features like mm -hmm. nose lips, lips mm -hmm. ass like whatever it was so many comments on my features and like my butt and my my nose and you know they are more white so they have smaller noses and like and it was almost it was so many times they mentioned it that it got offensive for me and this is last year mm. and it was so much i called jay and i cried about it because it was like they were almost treating me like I was like the token black friend. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I don't really ever want to hear that light, lighter toned or fair skinned people don't know the difference because they do mm. and they've seen it. It's just that because they don't get that treatment, they don't have to acknowledge it because it's not them. And I'm pretty sure she's seen this firsthand. I right. know so many women. There's I, honestly, I can't count one black woman that I don't know today that will say that that's never happened to them. Mm. And that's a problem. That's extremely bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it's kind of like, when does somebody step up and say like, that's not right? You know what I'm saying? But it's almost also like, just to speak in your defense, they, it's so common to them that even their tone right. is common to them. How they address it like, is normal to them. Like, cause it's almost like they know, like, of course, like I'm light skinned. Like, of course it's light. I'm right. Has like, you know what I mean? Has anyone or have either yeah. y'all ever heard the saying like you're pretty for a dark-skinned girl yeah yeah like, uh, yeah uh, like, like we've well, heard that tons of times so like those are those are certain sayings yeah. and things like that that shows it like your your beauty cannot be like because your features because of your skin tone like you can't just be pretty yeah you're you got pretty because you're for... or just being pretty I, i've gotten pretty for a black girl mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying like it's weird like you know and having a my daughter is very light-skinned you get what i'm saying Yeah, my girl too yeah exactly so you know, it's weird because, so because I dealt with that, I had a, and this is another transparent moment, because I dealt with that, like when I got older, I always pride myself. I always said, I want a brown skinned son. Like I want my son brown, right? I had a light skinned daughter. My daughter's beautiful, but I didn't realize subconsciously, and this is accountability on brown skinned people, 
my daughter was like, why do you want a brown skin son? Mm. She's light skin. You yeah, get what I'm saying? But systematically, that's programmed in my head as well. You have to fight and back And I had to now. explain to her, no, no, no. Like, you're beautiful. Like, I love my light-skinned daughter, you know? And I had to explain to her because she even deals with people calling people, her white girl. Exactly, right. Wow. And that's what, yeah, yeah, and like, that's what I was about to go. And yeah, I think, like, I think what happens is because we are already separated, right? That's when we separate each other. Each other. And, I, and that's why, I, like, I understand you say, like, yeah. they do know better. And I want to hold her accountable. But at the same time, if we're looking at our history and our past, they we almost have to don't just know look, better. You get what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like, yo, we were separated, so that's what we think is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So growing up, we separate each other, mm -hmm. not knowing any better, right? So mm -hmm. like, we have dark skinned people who make fun of light skinned people. Yeah, like you same. Tell you, like yeah. we have, we have dark skinned people who wouldn't date light skinned people because yeah. of whatever. Well, like I was telling like you guys like the other day, well yesterday, that like even growing up, like my dad's dark skinned, my brothers were all brown skinned, and they would make fun of lighter skinned men. Like mm -hmm. so, it was almost like. As I was growing up, it was like, oh, light skinned boys are sissies or they're bitches or they're gay or all these, you know, tones, right? So when I grew up, I've dated light skinned men, but I never took them serious, mm. just to be honest. But that's because, and that's just saying that neither side is right mm -hmm. at all. Right, because right. the fact that you can make a take away the masculinity from a man due to his skin tone. Is not okay, and that's why you I know said, what I'm saying that's but, not okay. But that's why I said let's hold her accountable, right? Yeah. But let's also have some grace, but because yeah. of our past, right? right. right. And that's why right. I say when it comes to ignorance, it's different. Yeah. When you are cho when you're choosing to know your history, when you're choosing to understand and listen, then you're you you might can get a pass for being right. ignorant at one time. But if you're ignorant and you're intentionally ignorant, right. therefore after, then you're right. just you're just ignorant right. to be ignorant and know you don't get and no pass. And it's almost like I feel like she tried to use the crutch like why can't I make a song for the light skin baddies? Kind of like how Beyonce made brown skin girl. Right. But it's because her her unknown ignorance that she doesn't acknowledge promoted it in another right. way versus. Like, in an empowering way. You get what I'm saying? And I and I think it all goes back to educating yourself. Yeah. Like really understanding that like the brown paper bag test. You know, why did that exist? Meaning like you're going to to enter into a building, they have to put your skin tone matched up against a brown and if you were lighter than it, you could go in. You know, mm -hmm. and that was division. Let's say we all of us go to a store and put yeah. it into today's times. Yeah. Our entrance is determined by yeah. our skin and, tone. Bro, it's crazy yeah. I just talked to Amaya about this, right? And it's it's weird because I, I sat down and I had this conversation with her and like she was saying, you know, she has been teased because she was light skinned, like people mm -hmm. calling her white and things like that. And I was like, you know what's crazy? This shows when it when it came down to the uh what it, what is the, the the paper, the contract that, that, that was written up and he said if you follow this, then it will Oh the Constitution? Well, no. Nah. Um when he the, basically said laws? Um, the, uh, if this works, Jim Crow laws, Jim Crow laws. laws. It's crazy right. because it's almost mm -hmm. like they set this up intensely, right? Yeah. They, they, they said they, it will work they, for thousands yeah, of years. It's like if they it separated works, it'll us, work right? for so, thousands of years. So now we separate each other, right? And and my point is We're conditioned at this point. Yeah. Right. My point is now look at look at us. It's like, yo, dark skinned people this, light skinned people this. But at the end of the we day, all we all black. Black. No, right. And I was about to say, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, back in the day, they still ain't give a fuck. If you had one percent black in you, yeah, you, you were black. considered black and you Period. couldn't have Period. you couldn't have the rights that other white right. people had exactly. but Period. even down to Danny but look at us, look at us a dominican even if she doesn't associate or people saying she's spanish or whatever motherfucker y'all was treated we're the minority here okay at the end of the day y'all the fact that you, that would even be divided in that way like my nigga we were treated all the same like we were all slaves, we were all slaves. All like, slaves. Nigga, nobody had the privileges you ain't your people ain't had the privileges we ain't had the privileges nigga we all you know what i'm saying in the same boat so i think you know just she should have just apologized you know, and just, you know, like, yeah, I, you know, I, I expect, didn't know anybody. No, this is what I will say. At this point, I feel like that's where people's PR teams don't do a good job. Um, because I feel like if somebody's not in the background educating her, like, whoa, I see where you were trying to go, but let me educate you because you need to understand this or you need to understand that. And, you know, and I do have a big problem, which I'm sure a lot of black females have, is people who do this and still will turn around and date a dark skinned man. Yes. I don't understand it. Mm. If this is the situation, stop dating our kind then. Stop recro uh, don't know that. Re uh, procreating yeah. with our kind because at that point, you're a walking contradiction. Yeah. So. Yo, speaking of dating, right? Yeah. Question. When we talk about dating, uh, we talking about like dating norms. And can I have this real quick? We talking mm -hmm. about dating norms, right? <clears throat> so we see. We see the Lori Harvey and, and Michael B. Jordan situation. Yeah. Even be, even before Lori Harvey and Michael B. It was Lori Harvey and this person. This Lori, person. Har Lori Harvey X. Right, but, it's always somebody. So I we feel like for, 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 for a woman, I feel like it's an empowering. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I see a lot of women saying 
basically like this is empowering date, yeah, this for them. Well, well, yeah, date. Right. They're basically saying date, date. till you find out one. Yeah, but I feel like for a lot of men, we are judging her saying like yeah. you're a hoe or whatever. When it comes to the norms in dating, how do you like what what do you think it should be with social media and, and everything now? So this is what I will say. Um, hmm. So I feel like, you know, Lori's young and um I don't know what she does with these men with behind closed doors. I don't know if she's fucking all of them. I don't know if she's just dating. Um I definitely think that people should keep a little more privacy to their dating life because, you know, at the end of the day, like if you're taking pictures with everybody you're dating or if you're you know, putting out there and it's not lasting at a point. It does look like, are you the problem? Because you keep switching mm. as well. However, it's just like, just have some sacredness to your union, no matter what. Um, however, I don't see anything wrong with women dating um, until they find somebody they really like. I just don't encourage exclusively publicly putting it out there each time you're dating, because at that point, it's almost like, are you pressed because you're dating this man or that man? Um, but dating is fine. Like, you know, if you want to date, you know, I can't tell the next bitch what she's going to do. But if she want to date and um, test the waters, she could do, do that. that. Catch 22 in a building. Brandon and Tim is here. So it's crazy because uh, Alex had gave us some numbers that mm -hmm. I didn't. How many, how many people did you think? The oh, average. What are you going to ask here? Mm -hmm. Oh, my bad. What do you think like the person's average, the average body count for men and women? Like. Oh, we did this math yeah, before. Many, we sure did do this math. Thing. We did this math. What was the average so, thought? No, it wasn't. Well, what I thought before I did the numbers, yeah. like uh, for men. And I women. don't know, niggas is hoes. So but they did both together, but so for men, I'm always gonna go higher because you know. Why? Wow, wow. Wait, what? You think we don't care about our body and our you know. like the sanction? Our no. No. Uh, we do. <laughs> I'm not just giving this dick to I'm, anybody. I'm but you did. No. Maybe now. Individual. Maybe older no, you don't, you don't, What? You this dick ain't give, for everybody. But it's, you gave it to then. many of nobodies. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, this dick is for, for special people only. Oh, so they all were special. So go ahead. So he, uh, all y'all was special, sweetie. Go ahead. Tell them they special. Tell them. Because now they happy. Go ahead. Now, they, now, they're, now they're basking in glory. Go ahead. Babe, you no, no, no. They're all, no, they're all changing now. Tell them they all special. That you just told, just clarify what you're saying. All right, I'm gonna clarify what I'm saying. <laughs> Please. I feel like once you get a certain age, you're supposed to just be being being selective with who you lay down with. What age course. did yours start for you? Mine? Yeah. Mine started at, uh, I think it was like 27, I think. <laughs> oh, so I was the first selected. <laughs> <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? So what, what what did you think the average number was? Average for guys, I would have said was like, I don't know, because you know every guy not getting pussy like every guy, so I can't talk for all guys. So is a certain type of guy that's getting pussy? I feel like yeah, you know that. Like every nigga not getting pussy. Like oh, shit, some niggas not getting as much pussy as other niggas. We know that. Like some niggas can't get no. Some niggas it's hard to get pussy. They getting pussy once every Giant. year. <laughs> Them niggas is home. It was hard blue balls. To get pussy. Them niggas is tired. Yeah, I'm a lame. Okay. I was lame. Um, you said what? I said I was a lame. Yeah, I, it was hard for me to get get it out in, in out the mud. I, mean, I had to struggle. But now, what's the average, babe? You are you and Alex are <laughs> brand new, brand new. Um, God no. Can keys. we get that drop? <laughs> sake. So, um, so I'm gonna say for guys, I'm gonna just say in a in, in from the ages of 16 through like let's say 25, I'm gonna do five a year. How many years is that? Nine? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'm not stupid, y'all. It was nine. I just had to make sure. Um, so nine years, I'm gonna say five a year. Damn, that's what? 40? What when nine times five is 45? Yeah, I'm gonna say 45. For men. For men. Okay, so I'm average 45? I'm not saying that's you. And I ain't saying that's none of these cues in this motherfucking room. So I ain't saying that's none of y'all. What you think? So for think women, uh, for women, I'm gonna say half that in a lifetime we talking no 16 to 25 i'm okay. gonna just say 16 to 25 i'm gonna say for women a little over half so i'm gonna say if the guys is for if guys is 45 and that's five a year that's 45 i'm gonna give women 26 so you had 26 I didn't bodies say in me a because every bitch and every nigga is fucking different all right so hold up so, i'm just so saying let's say 20 let's say 20 and 45 so how many how many is that so year that's about two and a half, two and a half 60, three yo yo, yo. That's, that's two and a half to three a year for nine years so 65 divided by two is what it's still like that's fucking, like 30, well, no, 65, that's 31.5 yeah, so it's like 30 let's just say 30 right 
Okay, so you're saying 65, 30. 30 so, so you say 30 on average for the average person, they will have 30 bodies. 30 divided by nine? No, 30, 30 bodies in a lifetime. Right. For, okay. For the average person. Female. Person. No. Because you said for no. men. Men is said, double. You said, you said men. Men is, is double. 30. So you think no, you said 60? No, I said, just cut the shit. I mean, you said men, I said, you said woman, 20. No, I, I said I said men, 45. Right. Women, about a little over half of that. So I'm going to say 25. So I say 20. 26. So 20 okay, plus 20. 45 is 65. 65. Okay. 65 divided by 2 is so you're average say, so yeah that's you're average added, so you because, say 30 and 30 yeah, yeah. so we're okay. so, so we're gonna say on average the average we think the average person having sex with 30 people in a, in a lifetime okay alex uh, according to a super drug survey in a lifetime the average number of sexual partners is 7.2 for people in the united states of america damn wait seven people like way off in a lifetime seven, seven, seven bodies. partners seven, seven bodies. bodies sexual Don't partners somebody. <laughs> fucking lie seven. ain't no what? Seven that a, ner a, ner a, a, got... a nigga who don't get no pussy rose <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say. Seven bodies in a lifetime. Seven in a lifetime. So that means you're either fucking one person for like ten years, and then the other two like through dating, I guess. So that a lot of people seven. do get, but you know, a lot of people do get. But married, Alex, too. I mean, but the next all... point though, you, it's, it does say according to the survey, forty-one point three percent of men and thirty-two point six percent of women admitted to lying about their sexual Exactly, history. so they're liars. So that's so, why. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, so we can't really Why are you seven. always I think lying. it's 7.2. I think that's... Oh, my God. <laughs> Some people do get married Stop and like... the fucking really lying. Young. <laughs> I don't know. So, but no, nah, so I just feel like, so in, in, to sum this up, the Lori Harvey thing, you feel like we just need to give her some slack and give, not even just her, like people in general, like, yo, if you want to date, you know what I'm saying? You want to get to know people, whoever... That's your I just feel like my thing is like, okay, it's okay to date. It's not okay to get in a relationship that everybody you date. Mm. That's what I think. Yeah. Like you could date, but like uh, like every relationship being a four month relationship, just say yeah, like I don't know, that's a little strange. Question. Touche. Who who do you think is putting these titles on her though? Do you think oh, we're putting the titles on okay, a relationship or okay, she's putting the Because okay. it's paparazzi. You know what I mean? She's a celebrity. She never said she's that going up. Was her man. But if you want to be, she I'm just asking. But she never that. denied it. I'm just asking. But if you want to, if you're, if you're, if you're intentionally being, being seen in public, you're giving us the, uh, the ability to assume what to we have want. an opinion. But, right. but assumption and facts is two different things. So she could let us assume whatever. She doesn't care. She doesn't speak. The girl doesn't say two words. So therefore, I've never, I've never heard her speak. You, like, like I, I think I've heard her speak. Like. One time. I heard her speak on this one video. That's, that's oh, one that, time. That just uh, I, yeah, it's just like she one time. Snow, snow. Yeah, she's, she's one time. <laughs> I ain't never heard it. Mad people on Twitter was like, "Yo, it's my first time ever hearing." <laughs> yeah, it's just like, like she don't be talk. But that's what I'm saying. Like honestly, she never said these, none of these niggas was her niggas. So you know, Touche says. I mean, outside Touché. of Diddy eating dinner with them, like with Steve Hart, that was the only time that she said that was her man. No, oh, but... exactly. See, so moral of the stories, ladies. With Steve Harvey, none of these niggas, y'all. None of them. None of them. None of them. I said to the ladies, I ain't say me. Do as I say, not as I do. No. Episode mm. fifty six. Back yo. to the basics. <laughs> yo, podcast episode fifty six. Back you to the basics. Yo, we want to appreciate. Yo, we want to say thank you. And we appreciate all of our day one listeners, our day one Absolutely. subscribers. Yo, please, please, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you hit the notification bell. Also, like, comment, share. <laughs> she want to be a YouTube couple so bad. But no, nah, yo, we appreciate. I got it down. We appreciate you guys. Yo, please make sure you go to um the anchor.fm app and uh, donate, support. In many ways, we got merch on the way. So make sure you buy a shirt. We uh, got you... card games on the way. Yeah, Period. so make sure you fuck with us. Uh, again, thank you. We appreciate you, man. Hiller Bay is here. Mr. J. Out. We out.